really, they're really dedicated uh, men and women. It's been very nice to watch. Donald, I won't take up any more of your time. I want to thank you for being on the Savage Nation. I hope to see you back here as soon as possible. Good luck in every one of your campaigns, and I hope to share some Cobb salad with you and meatloaf at Mar-a-Lago. I love that idea, and we'll see you soon. We'll talk to you soon, Michael. I appreciate your support. You've been so amazing, and I really do. I thank you very much for it. I'm not asking anything for it. Thank you, Donald Trump. That is it. 47 minutes after the hour, you're listening to The Savage Nation. If you care to join the program by, I guess, commenting, can't ask Mr. Trump any questions. If you get a comment on his appearance, I don't mean what he's wearing or what his hairstyle is. The phone number is 855-407-282. Back in a moment. It is the Savage Nation, and I don't want to spend the rest of the show, which is another hour and ten minutes, talking about the interview with Donald Trump, although it was very exciting. It's always exciting to have a man as important as he is on this program, and we get him once in a while. I don't lean on them. He knows that we're for him, but he's got to reach people who aren't going to vote for him, to be honest with you, and that's why he's on the road all the time. And I'd like to know if you enjoyed the interview. Did I miss anything? What would you have asked him that I didn't ask? is the real question. I think I did a, a fairly good job. I didn't ask him puff piece questions. Maybe you say I did. What do you want me to do, do a setup series like I'm Jimmy Fallon or one of the haha -ha boys on NBC? I'm not going to do it. KLIF, Dallas, Rich, thanks for listening. What's on your mind? Michael, it was a terrific interview with you and Trump. I hope you will continue your fervent support of him. You are a great compliment to him. Uh, you tell it like it is. He tells it like it is. He's honest. Uh, really and truly, to be honest with you, uh, there are no other Republican candidates that can touch Trump. And lots of times he gets a hit about what he's not specific and not this. People don't realize when Donald Trump gets together and decides to do things, he puts the best of people together and he gets it done right. And he gets That's, You hit the nail on the head. That's what a good leader does is he finds people to do the things for him. And I, I caught one thing he said, and I didn't prompt him. When I said, would you consider Cruz as a running mate? He said, it's too soon. We'll get there when we, you know once we're there. And he said, I'll, I'll ask you. I'll consult with you. Did you hear that part of it? Yes, I did. And I really questioned about Cruz. I like Cruz, but there's something there that just uh, frightens me a little bit, Michael. But you know what? Well, I don't have anything negative to say about Cruz, but I don't support him for one reason. I am a pragmatist. He can't win. Him in a head to head with Hillary, it's a loss for the, for the conservative side. Period. End of story. Trump head to head with Hillary is a win. It's a 70 30 unless they steal the election. By the way, thanks for finding me across the street on KLIF in Dallas. I guess you know I moved, uh, homes down there. Well, Daddy, I used to listen to you in WPAP. But you know, Michael, one last thing. Well, hold on. How did you find out I moved from BAP to KLIF in Dallas? How did you first hear about the move? I listen to you every day, and you started to have uh, advertisements. Now, you know, after the first... All right, good. That's important. That's very important that my BAP audience follows me across the street to KLIF. It's a, they're both great stations, by the way, and I'm glad to be in Dallas. It's one of my most important markets because the people and I think the same way, although we don't speak the same way, nor do we look the same way, nor do we have the same accent. It's real strange how this guy, Michael Savage thinks the way people in Texas do, and I'm proud to say that, because I live in California and I have no representation. I had to go to Texas to find the congressman to represent me, and he was on the show last week. Remember what he said he's going to do by cutting the funding off? Well, we'll follow up with Congressman X on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, 
culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Savage States of America. Yep, I'm the president of my own world. It's a virtual world called the radio world, and it's good enough for me. But who's going to be the real president of the United States is the only question we're all asking, because we know what we're facing in this country right now is pretty disastrous as a result of liberalism. You could say it's all a result of Obama. You wouldn't be wrong, because he is the leader of this demoralized, invaded, and violated nation of ours. We know that the liberal media is working around the clock, as someone wrote, uh, putting fairy dust on its childlike delusions, not facing the harsh winds of reality in places like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and Dallas, uh, in terms of what immigration is doing to these cities. It's not the immigration that we are told it is. It's not your grandfather or father coming here to work hard and to assimilate. You know that and I know that. Now, this is not to say that so many immigrants don't do the hard work of this country. They do. I walk the streets. I talk the streets. But you're not seeing the underbelly of crime because of the media. And in Europe, the Arab countries, the sub-Saharan African nations are pouring young men into Europe where the nations have been culturally neutered by insane liberalism. Rapes, pillage, welfare, they're doing just what invading armies do. And the question is, will Donald Trump stop the invasion in the savage nation? Will he stop the hordes coming in here to not become Americans, but, well, shall I say, not do as the Romans do, but make the Romans do as they do? That's the question, because all of us can see the tea leaves. We can read them, and we know what's going on. That's one topic. I will repeat some of the questions I asked Mr. Trump and ask you what you would have asked them had you had the chance. I also want to get to the movie Joy for a couple of reasons with Jennifer Lawrence. And I want to talk a bit about Sean Penn's glorifying the world's biggest drug kingpin and uh, leading the drug kingpin to his capture. It's a very big story in its own way. It shows the insanity of egotism, extreme narcissism, extreme egotism of the type exhibited by Sean Penn has now put him and his family in danger, many believe. Now, that's the question. But in addition to putting himself in danger for inadvertently leading the Federales to the world's biggest drug kingpin, it turns out that there's more at stake. I bet you didn't know this, this, but Manhattan U.S. Attorney, Preet Bahara, who's one of the greatest, I wish we had him out here in San Francisco, U.S. Attorney of Manhattan, Preet Bahara, is leading a federal probe over Sean Penn's ties to El Chapo, and New York prosecutors are seeking a subpoena to search his cell phone, the New York Post is reporting. Others are saying... Very important things about this. Criminal defense lawyer David Houston says it may be difficult to charge Penn with anything. However, Guzman is responsible for literally the deaths of thousands of Mexicans and for the countless deaths and suffering of U.S. citizens and others around the globe through his command of a significant part of the global drug trade. He was a wanted fugitive, and Sean Penn and Rolling Stone ignore all that in the name of what? To produce a piece of pseudo-journalistic garbage? which glamorizes Guzman, airs Guzman's opinions, panders to this murdering, disgusting individual, they write. It's hard to get your head around the naivete and self-righteousness of someone like Sean Penn. Yes, my friends, liberalism is a mental disorder, and there is no greater example of it than the self-aggrandizing, literally crazy Sean Penn. In addition to that, Mexico wants to question the crazy actor over the Chapo meeting. They want to find out uh, what that was about, and they're not releasing any further information. They want to know if he committed a crime. They said, yes, a reporter can interview a drug cartel suspect, but Sean Penn is not a journalist, they say. He's an actor. The U.S. Rock Magazine, which is known to publish falsehoods on a regular basis, published an interview over the weekend that the drug kingpin gave to the actor and a girl in an undisclosed jungle clearing in Mexico three months before he was recaptured. 
A Mexican official told AFP that the meeting eventually helped authorities track down the drug lord, age 58, who, as you know, was arrested on Friday in the seaside city of Los Mochis in the northwestern home state of Sinaloa. My friends, liberalism is a mental disorder, and there is no greater example of it than the self-aggrandizing Sean Penn. Was he carrying a chip? Did the CIA or the DEA plant the chip in Sean Penn? Did Sean Penn act as a mole for the CIA or the DEA? People are asking these questions. Listen to me. There's much more to this story than meets the eye because everyone knows that the cartel is relentless in its ability to reach people anywhere. And if they want you, they're going to get you. So why would Sean Penn have put himself and his family at such great risk unless he knows something that we don't know, some deal that was made with authorities, let us say, on both sides of the law before he went into that so-called jungle hideout. It's a very crazy story. The phone number is 855 two. I'd like to talk more about uh, these topics, not just the Trump interview, which is over. I don't want to live on the laurels of the last hour in this hour. We'll do a little bit about that, and we will move on. So let's go backwards in order to go forwards. Let's start with WABC Bill. Bill, what would you think? Well, go ahead, please. Once again, it was another home run by uh, Michael Savage in having Trump on, and Trump, as usual, was his uh, magnificent self. And uh, my, my support for Trump gets stronger every time I hear him speak. Yeah, I do, too. I think he's better and better. I love the people who keep putting him down, saying he's not specific. How much more specific could he have been when he said he would eliminate sanctuary cities? I mean, he's very specific. They're using the same old arguments that he's too general. He doesn't say specific things. He said a lot of specific things on the show, didn't he? Yes, he did. And what I like about Trump is that he's done so much with his life. He's, he's accomplished things. You know, for instance, we have a president now who never had a real job in his life. And this guy has done so much with so many people and created so many jobs. Well, Obama's done an awful lot in his life. He's carried on the traditions of both of his fathers and of the mentors he had who were diehard communists who hated America. And he's done very well by them. He's uh, acted out on all of their principles. He sat in Reverend Wright's church for 20 years where he heard hate America rhetoric and says he didn't hear anything. Well, apparently it uh, fell on fertile ground. He sat there for 20 years. He didn't leave. So everything that Reverend Wright said, like, God damn America, apparently the president didn't find offensive. And he's acting out very well on Reverend Wright's advice. Okay, thanks for the compliments. I appreciate that one. Now, I want to go to some of the callers on the other topics. Listen to this one coming up. This is the issue of El Chapo and Sean Penn, which, by the way, I think is a very big story. Because there's more to it than meets the eye, and I don't think we should ignore it. If a crazy actor known to be deranged. Here's an idiot who went to Iran and told us they're nice people. Remember that? Here's a man who cozied up to the ex-dictator uh, in South America, if you remember that. The man cannot keep away from bad people. And that's to burnish his image of being a really dangerous bad guy, you know, the toughest guy around, the real McCoy, Sean Penn. It's a shame that he isn't the real McCoy. The real McCoy are in the U.S. Army, or the U.S. military. Those are the real tough guys, the ones you never hear about. Not guys like this who grandstand every day of their life and do nothing for the betterment of society. Now let's go to the calls and see what you think. WABC, George, your opinion on which topic? Go ahead, please. Listen, if, uh, you know, if, if the NSA, right, if somebody knew something about that this guy was going to go out there do some kind of crazy documentary, the NSA could just home in on his phone number and pretty much know all his whereabouts. And they can home in on them. So it's not really like who's planting this and who's planting that. And uh, one other thing I'd like to say is thank you for changing the, uh, the shape of our brain. It never goes back to the original shape. I don't know who said that. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever put that that way. I like that. That's pretty good. Well, a great thing. <laughs> changing the shape of our brain. I like that. So I've changed the internal geography of your mind, huh? Oh, no, you do that to everybody. Thank you. You are a national treasure. Thank you very much. All right, I like that. I like being a national treasure. As I said, I want to talk about the woman who created the mop uh, because I realize, I realize what a salesman I could be if I wanted to sell a product. You know, Think about that. You know, I, I thought about that. I said if I really was out to just get rich, 
I had so many opportunities when I was younger.